This meeting was recorded to give you an idea what to expect for the first kickoff meeting. Jen Santos is the project manager for this client and is with them from start to finish. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So basically what we're going to do today is we're just going to go through our implementation stages and what we're going to do to roll this process out for you. So we'll do a brief system overview. We'll look at what we do with our, with our configuration and planning, our configuration and setup, our final prep, and then what to expect for the installation and go live. So if you're not already familiar, these are just a couple of terms that you may hear us speak about when we, while we go through this process. So LPOS is basically the front end point of software, and that is installed on what we term as the POS terminal. STAGS is your production or your tagging software. It is installed on the tag terminal. LBOS is that back office software piece that is installed at each store PC, and it will communicate that information up to LBOS Central. LBOS Central contains the sales data from each of the stores. So that's where your LBOS store computers are feeding up to is that LBOS Central. And we have a new piece of uh, software with our STAGS Pro, which is STAGS Manager. And that will be where you will handle uh, your price changes, any updates to STAGS that you need. So that would also include any uh, addition to departments or sub-departments, adding on taggers. Everything gets managed in that one spot now. I know I've already sent out some documentation to you. Uh, those pieces are the STAGS worksheet, uh, the implementation guide. So we need to have those pieces completed in order to basically prep the system with how you want it to work. Uh, we have been with this new transition to the STAGS Pro, looking at the STAGS worksheet and saying, if you give us your departments and your categories, then we can create your profile into our STAGS manager. And then we can go in there and walk you through how to add the prices. So it kind of is a dual feature of training you on what will be in place in your stores and where you're going to manage that piece of software. Uh, did any of you have any questions regarding that STAGS worksheet that was sent out? I, I know that from talking to Chris and Robert, they want to start off right away with condition and quality grading. Um, okay. So STAG Pro, the cloud administration for that, allows them to, uh, you know, can define good, better, best for quality and something like normal, um, like new, exceptional for condition and then have set up their prices behind that, right? For condition and then have set up their prices behind that, right? Exactly. So this is the perfect uh, situation where we would say that if you can list out in the STAGS worksheet, the very basic of information, which would be the departments and your uh, categories, uh, then we can import that in to the STAGS Manager Pro and then we can say, okay, now we're going to build the prices and we'll show you how to do that so that we can get everything in the right spot to begin with. Because the worksheet does not cover off on that uh, condition and quality pricing. It's very okay. difficult yeah. to input that into the spreadsheet. So Yeah, I just wanted you to know that um, going in because they have the advantage of having been doing grading with condition and quality uh, manually already and so uh, whereas a lot of customers that come up on barcoding you know just want basic rack pricing or blanket pricing they, these guys are further ahead than that okay that that's great i really appreciate that information john okay and then in our implementation guide that one is featuring more of the information we need for your front end so those point of sale terminals uh that would include if you have certain discounts that you want to be applying, if you have buttons that you want to be applicable to manager use only, if you have something like a donation button that you're not necessarily tagging anything for donations, but you want to be able to set, accept a donation in a dollar amount at the front end. So any of those buttons or special features, will need those listed out so that we can uh, create those for you. We're also looking for your sale rotation. So with your sale rotation, when we have that information, uh, we'll base you know, the colors on the tag terminals off that and also program in for those 
sales to kick in automatically. Now, regarding the process to sell existing items, typically what happens here is we have buttons that match the departments that you've listed out in the STAGS manager, and we'll have those on the screen. So you would manually enter those through until they flush out. Oh, Robert, I see, do you have a question? Yeah, I just, I wanna make sure that, and I think the answer is yes, but you've sent us whatever blank documents that we would fill out to get you back the information that you're asking for. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, okay. And as far as the S tags worksheet, I did also send a pre-populated one that will uh, cover off on some of those categories and departments if you needed examples. Some people prefer to use the populated ones where other one, uh, other people like to start from scratch, so it's all fresh. Okay, and if we're if we want a on that previous conversation a few minutes ago about donation, if we currently use a roundup process, you can accommodate that as well, right? On that is correct. Yes, that is correct. So we would okay. just say, and I'll, I'll mark it down here as well, that yes, you'll want to do roundup. So put there, that there. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So yes, and then just going back to that process to sell those existing items. So we would expect that to just be a manual entry until those existing items flush through the system. And then you're just scanning with your uh, new new items that you've tagged with us. Okay. Now moving that, into the- oh, Hey Robert, that's the way you wanna go. And at one point you talked about repopulating the whole sales floor with barcodes before you started scanning. But um, yeah. well, I've seen, I've seen well, current, yeah. yeah, currently we're not doing any scanning. It's all, it's yeah. all I mean, we're literally in the land of grease pencils. So um, <laughs> what, I, what I, you know, I anticipate, I don't wanna wait six weeks till the entire floor is tagged because then there's gonna be all kinds of exceptions. Um, that's why I want a 12 week testing window for that first for that first pilot store, um, because I want to see the whole process go all the way through so that I understand how it works once the floor is clean. Um, I don't know. Do, what do, you, do you have any concerns about that? Um, I mean, I think we've been able to or we had discussed doing some kind of workaround where there's like a manual entry or something. So we're scanning what's barcoded, but we're still able to ring up the stuff that isn't barcoded. Is that right. possible? Yes, that's exactly what the situation is. So as the goods that you are producing uh, in the S tags or on the S tags terminals, they'll be on the floor. Those ones will scan other items that are just brought up with price points would be manually entered into a uh, PLU or a department on the screen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank and, you. And I've seen it done both ways. And, and I don't, I've never seen any issues with, you know, the hybrid approach where, and the cashiers pick up on it really quick where they, they obviously see, okay, this one's barcoded. I'm going to scan it. This one's not, I'm going to ring it up with the buttons and they just go. And one advantage of that is you start collecting data sooner. So you can, you know, start seeing some trends in your sales even before you're done with your 12 week pilot. Kind of flush out any issues. You're that sounds good. With, I, uh, I, with I'm comfortable with, with what we're talking about. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Let, let you look at early on uh, any issues you might have with how you set up your your grading with condition and quality, and make sure you you didn't have a price point that's you know not what you want behind those uh, selections. Okay. Okay, great. And so then one of the other questions that we have here um, is. Do you sell new goods? So that means uh, items that are currently on the floor that are barcoded, but you're not tagging. Yes. Well, we do sell new goods that have manufacturers barcodes, uh, and we would like to incorporate them in our inventory. Um, so we're curious how that dovetails. Okay. So what I will send out to you is I will send out our, it's basically a default import sheet and it, for the new goods and it will list how that's supposed to be sold, uh, entered in. So you're looking at your UPC, your pricing, a department, all of those items. And we can take that file as a CSV format and import it into the system. Okay, and then we're looking at, I know from discussions that your installation goal date is the first store for August 1. Do you have that installed? Is that uh, still what we're on track for? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. And as you just previously mentioned, you'll run for the 12 weeks and then we'll be proceeding with the other stores. And the information I have is possibly two installs a week after that initial 12 weeks. Yes, it would be, it would be my goal that we'd have all 13 at the time uh, done by somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, mid to mid December. Okay. That's kind of a goal. If we don't make that, that's okay. But I, once that 12 weeks is over and, and, every, and we feel very, and we feel confident then if we could get the rest done in the next four to five weeks, that'd be great. Okay, that's fantastic. And, you know, 12 weeks is, you know, ample time for, you know, you to come back and us to go uh, work with you on any changes or any little things mm -hmm. that you see are not quite the way you had envisioned them. So I think we would be ready to roll with that. That sounds great. Um, the pin pads and the payment terminals and processing uh, do you currently have a processor that you were planning to use, or is that kind of up in the air? So, um, it, and this is kind of our fault. Uh, we're we're actually Chris and I are sitting in the uh, store manager's office of a store that we're grand opening tomorrow morning. So we've been a little sidetracked with getting a store open, and mm -hmm. shame on us. But we we are still in the in that space where I need to get a lot more comfortable with the register configuration. So what I was hoping we could do uh, once once we can clear the air after tomorrow's grand opening is have the team send us out that what we think we want. We want to set it up kind of in a, in a lab environment, make sure that that's how that's the look we want, because I, I do want a customer facing monitor, but I don't want some big television screen. I want something smaller. I need a pin pad that is uh, interactive. I want. You know, I, I, the register and the, and the one facing the cashier, that's that's pretty normal stuff. But there's a there's a particular look that I want. I want to understand what that what that actually feels like in front of me from a customer and a user perspective. And then once we decide on that configuration, then we're ready to like run with it. But we're not there yet. OK, and I hope I didn't confuse you. No, I, I appreciate all that information. So it's more of just uh, finalizing what equipment that you're going to want to have installed at your location. Yes, and I'd like to make that happen sooner than later once we get past tomorrow morning. Okay, so I think that would be more of a Gary and Andrew uh, type of thing to look after the equipment that uh, you're going to want to see on site and what we're going to install. So Perfect. I will leave that for them to deal with uh, after today. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes, yeah, so I, th I think that uh, requirement for loyalty interaction and other, you know, interaction with the pin pad is going to drive the decision on, you know, which which model we're going to go with. And uh, and now, oh. Robert and Chris, I'm not sure if you had any more discussions about leasing those or if you want secure to put them in their quote or, or where did we end up with that? You know, I need to, oops, I think I'm on mute. No, I'm not. I, I need to reach out to Tom, my CFO, and find out. I know that he was contacted by the finance organization, and I'm not sure where he has landed in terms of his decisions on the approach we want, the financing approach we want to take. Right. Yeah, because I think there was the option to lease the whole thing. Right, there was. And, but if you decide to, to buy the POS stations and all the peripherals, there's still the decision do you want to actually own the pin pads or not? And, and I'm seeing more and more um, people moving away towards away from that and having the pin pad provider uh, in your processor be responsible for managing those. And that, and that includes like any encryption updates or if one, if one just dies and they have a hot spare replacement process, they'll send it out fully, fully ready to go with your own, you know, required encryption for the, for your store setup and, so anyway, this decision to be made there. Yeah, the big advantage of that is that uh, you're not stuck, you know, two years, three years down the road where because of PCI compliancy, your pin pads are deemed not PCI compliant, can't be upgraded, so you have to replace them. When you're renting them, you basically get a replacement. It just automatically keeps you uh, in line with the PCI compliancy. So you're not surprised you have to buy 200 uh, pin pads Alan, do you have a perspective on this? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, I, I think my whole world has gone OPEX over the last few years. I mean, you, you, John, you know, this IT was traditionally a CapEx, but, um, you know, I, I am grown very comfortable. And I think you'll find that Tom, that's our CFO, is a lot more comfortable with, with OPEX than he would have been five years ago. So I, I love from the idea of having to help, you know, provide support for these. If we could have a rearrangement with the drop shift overnight, mm -hmm. pre-configured, I think that's going to be the best thing for our team. Um, and I would say that if we go 12 months on leasing and then we decide to change our mind, is there a route for that? That'd be my question, I guess. I can answer, I guess, as far as the pin pads are concerned. Um, and it's basically yes to all of those. <laughs> Right. When we do boarding on the pin pads, uh, depending on the line that you go with, if they come to you like from straight from the supplier factory done, the download process is very simple. Um, I keep it that way just because it makes my life easier. So yeah, um, we have one fairly large chain where they just add in the lane number and the store number as their identifier for that device, they do a quick download and it's ready to replace. Um, another exciting, to me anyways, because I've apparently become a really large geek, is we have the option now on Deja Vu pin pads where the roundup function actually is on the onus of the customer and not the cashier. So it will prompt on the pin pads to round up similar to a tip function. That is my preference. I want an interactive pin pad that will that will do that and that will uh, prompt for if if you know the loyalty program I want would probably be telephone number driven and where a customer would uh, I don't want to. I don't know that I want to get into the world of cards. So I think I want the mm -hmm. customer to enter, a, uh, be prompted to enter their loyalty number, which is a phone number, and then prompted at the end of the transaction for roundup. And so I need to see pin pad options that have that ability. Yeah. Well, right now in our world, there's no pin pad at all that does both. Really? Okay. Yeah. Not like loyalty is done um, on the register, and we can search by phone number but the cashier has to do it okay that's because good. the yeah because the semi-integrated feature of it um it's we can do one not both do you anticipate a, a time when you will have both opportunities or is that something is that a limitation we'll always have i'm not sure that's kind of right now with the addition of android pin pods um it's made a little bit of the customization easier Right, which is why we can do the roundups on the pin pads now versus having the cashier ask. Because what will happen a lot of times is you'll get that one cashier that no matter what, no matter how many times you tell them you have to ask and you've got, they've got the screen in front of them, they'll skip it. Right. So well, a customer, based on my personal experience as a customer who's driven to the loyalty program, will make sure that takes place. Exactly. They won't yeah. make sure they do the roundups. So yeah. I, I <laughs> And Robert, I was going to say the downside on just prompting for roundup on the pin pad is people are getting used to that and, and they're bypassing it and I know. all the time. And I so know. if you have your cashier actually say it, then there's more likelihood that they're going to say, okay. And it also gives the cashier a chance to have a little bit of a dialogue about your mission. Too and, that I agree with a hundred percent. It's just, you know, yeah. At. Yeah. It's that kind of, you know, it's so, a, it's a tight line that you can, yeah. gender, you, can still, you can still have the cashier ask, but say mm -hmm. here, here, but it's you know explaining what they're showing on the pin pad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'd be, be interesting to see, you know, if you had a four-lane store, two lanes with the pin pad, two lanes with the cashier asking, see which one is the most. So so listening to all this feedback, I think I want. I, what's most important to me is to capture the loyalty. I could do that. I heard I can't have both, but I could have one or the other, right? 
I would have to double check how it works in the States. Okay. As far as the loyalty is concerned. Okay. Okay. So more to, more to explore on that, but you guys have, uh, you guys made me think a little bit stronger. So we'll, we'll, we'll come up with what we're looking for and that is compatible. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, uh, so the next topic on this page is the network and the cabling. Uh, Sarah, I'll let you continue on with that discussion. Um, okay. So I assume because you're oil pen, however you put it, <laughs> um, there's no existing infrastructure or there is, but smaller as far as the network requirements go. Sorry, can, what's the, the question? Are you asking, are we wired well enough to have this hardware in place? Yes. Yeah. Like, do you have an existing infrastructure where we can just actually yes. just, okay, so at each. Yeah. In, many, in, in most cases, not to say we won't find a lane or a register at a store where we'll have to do a little bit of work. Um, Robert, what is our pilot store? Have we made that decision? Uh, it's my hope that we can do Indianola, but Pickerington would be the backup. Okay, um, I think the answer is yes at both of those. Indianola, I have a little more concern, but knowing that this is going to happen and we'd have an August first goal, we would we would be ready by then. I'll say that. Okay, because yeah, what it's a very simple Windows sharing network. Um, we can do by IP DNS. Preferred it, not quite as okay. tight on the traffic that way. Yeah. Uh, and I saw the diagram. I, I think what, what would work well for us is to have a separate call on that for okay. those specifics. Um, and then I would I would increase the number of people on my side of the call for that. Sure. And you can bring whoever makes sense on your side. And then we would we take that spec and we'd go get Just ready. And then we, yep. You got it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so and there you have a, a really detailed uh, network requirements document too, right? That you can provide, ahead, or maybe you already have ahead of that meeting. Um, I believe he has the initial kind of diagram now on how like segmenting and mm -hmm. the basic setups right now will play into your network as much as needed. Like we don't, we're not saying this is how it has to be. Okay, good. If you have, you know, a certain setup, if you want it in a domain, no problem. We'll put it in a domain. If you want it, you know, half the tagging machines, wireless, wireless, not preferred, but we'll do it. Like it's your network. Right. We're just going to be part of it. Yeah, I think the tagging is more imprinting. Those kind of things are a little more of my concern in terms of infrastructure readiness, especially right. at the at all the stores. Especially the other stores on the network side, we're pretty straightforward. We handle all of our security with VLANs, so you'd Perfect. be on the general network. But we, we would put the registers on their own VLAN, and we do today. So. Yeah. Um, but we can get into those specifics later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Andrew, I'm seeing more customers, more, more of my clients go into wireless back office um, tagging. I don't, I don't know that it's a big deal for, for you because you're only going to have three tag machines as far as I, I know. So I, I still recommend, you know, hard coax cables to them um, um, or internet cables, but, um, but you can decide and, and you, you might try a couple with Wi-Fi instead. It, it gives yeah. you some flexibility on moving them around. And and I know these are these are Windows machines, right, Sarah? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, so some of the other clients I have are using Android tablets instead, and so naturally, you know, good good uh, remote connections for those. Yeah, Robert and Chris, I think, you know, we should go to the Indianola store, you know, with, with Todd, the four of us, and talk about the physical placement of these devices. And then I think we would then take take that and then do our actions to be ready. So yeah, good call. Sounds good. Great. Okay, so moving along, once we have uh, the information from you, we will be prepping the hardware that is done here in the uh, Winnipeg office. Uh, we'll perform the initial configuration. So that's based on that information. 
And then we'll have a meeting to show you what we've come up with. So that would be looking at the screens, going over the functions, the processes. Uh, often in these demonstrations, you'll be able to identify, oh, I didn't really want that button to work that way, or we need this to happen instead, or you know, that, that's really great. So we'll review those changes that we'll make after that and finalize the setup with you. Uh, we'll be doing the Elbos central server. For the data candy piece, we will set up a meeting with uh, data candy and they can go over their program and show you all of the different features in their portal as well. Uh, towards the end, we'd like to make sure that we've confirmed what you have your pin pads, the payment terminals are all in place for your network and cabling. And then we like to confirm that rollout or order. So even though we'll have and we'll know what the first pilot store is, we just like to make sure that we know where we're going to go next, and then we'll prep the equipment in that order. In our final prep, we're basically shipping the equipment and supplies. You will receive uh, tracking emails. There will be some items that are drop shipped. Oh, sorry, Robert, you've got a question? No, but yeah, thank you. Um, my marketing group would like to interface with the Data Candy folks probably sooner than your timeline called out for. Okay. Uh, just to get some of their questions and thoughts answered so they can start to think about how they would intersect with all of this. And I was hoping uh, we could arrange that. Okay, most definitely. I will uh, reach out to Data Candy and, uh, or if you want to tell me some of your availabilities, then I can put those out to Data Candy and, uh, you know, we'll make a mutual time agreeable for us. Okay. And it is a good thing to uh, start working with Data Candy sooner than later because uh, you know sometimes it does take a little longer than we expect to configure. So, yeah, I think um, Justin reached out with Data Candy. Um, we've just kind of been in the midst of this store opening process. I haven't had a chance to debate with them. Okay, well that's great. Did you connect them with the call? Okay. We were going to do a, a meeting. Okay. Introductory. Okay. So, did you want to just handle that on your side with Justin, or do you want me to? Facilitate? We'll try. Yeah. I didn't realize we had that step in place. So, okay. we'll drive that from here. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. All right. And so, some of the items that you might see that will be drop shipped might be um, we typically uh, drop ship the UPS term terminals and the, uh, if you were going with pin pads from us, those usually get drop shipped as well. Uh, we have the team confirming that your shipments are arriving so that uh, when we, our installers are there, they have the equipment as needed. And we'll set up a meeting with our Power BI team so that they can demo the reports available to you. And then we will also confirm uh, who will be on site and doing your installations with you. Okay. okay. Then typically the first day of the install, uh, our installer will walk around your location and review where they're going to be installing the equipment. They'll set up the LBOS and test the connection, uh, install the tagging equipment. And then they'll start to do the review and train on S tags. Then we'll work on to the point of sale equipment and it's set up lane by lane. And each location has their own way of how they see this rolling out. So in some cases, we'll install a POS terminal in a back room and we'll do the training with the staff there. And then uh, when the, towards the end of the day, they'll move one of the lanes out and put that in place and then continue with the other lanes so that you're ready to go live uh, the next day. Okay. The second day of install, it's typically training on LBOS and the installer is there to you know help out with any of the processes that are needed there's a question about tagging, you know, you're changing the tags and people can't remember how to do that. They'll be there to assist and also answer any questions the cashiers may have as well. For the LBOS reports, typically there is not a lot to see and go through for the first day. So usually uh, we recommend, you know, after a week or so that we follow up and have a review on going over that report with you to make sure that you fully understand it. And that is also a time where we'll be getting the Power BI team more involved to set those reports up once you have the data coming through. Hey, Jen, I had a question. So, mm -hmm. in, and forgive me for not knowing the answer, but the, the proposal we have, does it include this installation go live for each of our stores or only the first one or more? 
Uh, Gary or Andrew, I think you'll have to answer that question as I don't have that information. <clears throat> Um, I believe we had it for each one. Give me one moment. I will double check. If you want to continue, mm -hmm. I will pipe in when I have that answer. Yeah, that, that's what I recall. You quoted Andrew. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's basically um, it for today's uh, information that I'm, I'm providing. So if you have any other questions, um, feel free to, to speak up. Robert, did you have another one? Yes, uh, this is probably more for Alan, but um, Alan, do you, and when that first store goes live, how will we be transmitting the information to um, finance? Or will we still be, right now that's a very manual process. How will we dovetail our reporting to finance in, or, and is, or is that after the fact and something we handle on our own? Well, that, that possibilities all, all around. So uh, let me ask a question of the secure manage team. So uh, secure retail team, sorry, I have another product called secure manage. Um, so Power BI is set up on your side. We're obviously using that in the cloud to look at reporting. We are in the middle of a large scale BI initiative where at some point we anticipate wanting to pull that data out of that environment and move it into our warehouse or lake so that it can basically be you know, tossed in with all of our other business uh, KPIs and finance and employee data so that we can you know, make even higher level decisions. Obviously, I think your Power BI environment will be great for Robert and his team for you know, steering the ship daily. What is our capability of getting to that data you know, programmatically, I guess? Sarah, are you able to answer that one? From our side, I, and this is not my area of expertise at all, but I know that in other locations, we have been able to uh, pull information from our Power BI into different areas for the other customers. And Sarah, I see you're off mute now. So yeah, sorry. Maybe, you, maybe you can fill in, <laughs> in those blanks for me. Thank you. Um, there is quite a lot of data that's accessible through SQL. Um, we just use the table. Okay. So if you have an existing environment, we can just pull it out of certain tables. Perfect. I'm yeah, not the that. best one with that data, but yeah, it's I know it's there. Yeah, we, we have some pretty good documentation for that, Alan. So yeah, um, we, we call it a cheat sheet, so to speak. So you can get everything you need and believe it or not, two pages for the data. So it's laid out in common sense, but it does all the yeah. tables, does the relationship, the links, Perfect. the whole bit. And it's really Yeah, easy. that's what we need. I mean, yeah. And there, yeah. just uh, forgive me for jumping. Are you on either of it? You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can hear you. Is there a, uh, I mean, isn't there, I guess I assume that there would be some kind of integration that could be did where, you know, not necessarily through Power BI, but for our accounting team, we could connect to Great Plains and yeah. send yeah. that yeah. financial data over to them. Because right now we're in a completely different world where we're sending an Excel sheet that's getting put in there manually. Um, yeah. No. But I, I wonder if we're just, you know, I, th I think there's a way to just plug it right in so that there doesn't even have to be, you know, we don't have to go through a Power BI or, or anything like that, right? Right. Yeah, yeah it's right. just an no, export right. file. Yeah, I think right. you're kind of and, and Chris, for me, requirements. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead, Alan. Well, I was going to say, for me, they serve both. So if right. I can, you know, the first stage would be to extract and integrate with Great Plains to mm -hmm. make your lives easier on the financial side. Most of those same train tracks would be used later also for the BI Center, which is a much later requirement for us. But, you know, generally the same techniques will work for both. So yeah. we will definitely have that opportunity. Yeah, and I, I think um, I know that when we talked to we have the demos, um, Secure Retail said, you know, they have existing integrations with uh, Great Plains already. I, I would recommend we make that a part of the scope for, for Go Live. Um, yes. And I'm not sure that doesn't go directly from, you know, the L boss equal tables and before that data gets moved to the BI environment for them. So that that's where I think there might be a difference. Um, yeah, so before they flatten it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then 
to, to actually integrate with your uh, enterprise uh, BI solution, to Sarah's point, there's a ton of detailed, you know, item by item yeah. tag data. That you're probably not going to want to pull into the corporate BI environment. So it's almost like you need to, you know, look at the data dictionary, decide which yeah. field really makes sense for making corporate decisions. And, and then um, I also wanted to ask Andrew or Gary, is, is there an API developed from, you know, either that unflattened, you know, SQL tables or the BI environment that Alan's team could, could, you know, use to understand how to pull that data? Yeah, just as far as the information, the documentation, like I said earlier, is pretty, pretty detailed and it'll give you all the all the information you need as far as what tables and how to link them and where the data is and okay. like i said it's, it boils it down to like a two-page document believe it or not and uh we spent a morning with you you'd be off and running and developing reports by yourselves as far as exporting uh into accounting packages i mean we do that every day yeah. and great planes as well so give us a sample of what the file should look like and we'll have that happen automatically and dropped off to wherever you want to pull pull that data in yeah okay. as far as that goes yeah it is completely separate from the power bi it's a csv yeah. export that's done all yeah. we need basically is the um like gary said the file structure the us. gl accounts we export it, you import it, and then, you know, do your checks and balances. Yeah, so for our internal team, we need to look at the manual process a little bit and understand what we need to transact into Great Plains, get it, get it basically mapped from system to system, and then we would take that CSV, you know, let them drop it in a specific place. We would pick it up and push it yeah. into Great Plains, so. Yeah, that's the normal process, and it's usually yep. not all that complicated, if they, especially since no. Secure is already done. Yeah. Yeah, it usually takes a couple of passes just to get it get it right. But uh, like I say, two or three passes, and then away you go. And then we set it up to be an automatic uh, process. At, at what point in this process do we need to engage our accounting team and get them? I mean, well, I like John's suggestion. I I think we should make it scope in scope for the rollout but, with the pilot store because. That's yeah. a good pilot to do as well. And then, you know, as we add stores, we don't have to come back and then go, okay, now let's integrate with Great Plains, you know, eight months later, we do it yeah. as we go. I, then, I guess uh, just from a timeline perspective, and we're going live in August, do we need to have a meeting with accounting yesterday to do this? Or do we need to bring them in, you know, in, a in month, April, three weeks? Or... Yeah. yeah, we, we need kind of somebody awesome. to... Uh to accept the files, sample files that we created and test it on your side. Once, okay. you, once we send you the files and then you give us the green lights and yeah, this is perfect and we'll automate the process. Okay. Yeah, we should do um, from that Indianola store or wherever we test, do the manual file, have it go into Great Plains and then in our Great Plains test environment, we could push the CSV of the same data and compare left to right and we'll know how close we were. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Feel free to contact us at the number indicated then select two for sales.